Hey guys, thanks for all the great feedback from last week's Poi Math video. This week we're going to tackle Poi Math Part 2. That is the difference between the unit circle as we understand it in algebra and geometry and the unit circle as we understand it with Poi. You may recall from last week that when we created a unit circle using our parametric equations, the radius was always equal to 1. Whereas when we create a unit circle in Poi, it always has a radius of 1 half the Poi length. The reason for this is, is that the unit circle is constructed out of the basic idea that the poi head and the hand are moving around the same size path. This is what's called an isolation. The question is, how can we make the radius in our parametric equations the same as it is in a poi unit circle pattern? Well, let's go ahead and revisit some of the math from last week, and it should help us come to an answer to this question. First and foremost, we're going to play around with the equation last week that gave us an extension. So, you may remember this as being x equals sine t plus sine t, y equals cosine t plus cosine t. This creates a graph wherein our hand path has a radius of 1, and the poi extends out one unit past it. So the total radius of this shape is 2. Now, if we go back to our equations and apply a little bit of high school math, namely the property that y equals x plus x is really the same thing as saying y equals 2x because 2x is the same thing as x plus x, then we can say x equals sine t plus sine t is really the same thing as saying x equals 2 sine t. Interesting. Let's go back and apply this to the equation. We're now going to say x equals 2 sine t, y equals 2 cosine t. And this is actually going to produce almost the exact same graph. But wait, we can now add an additional term on top of it. We can say x equals 2 sine t plus sine t, y equals 2 cosine t plus cosine t. And now we've created a graph wherein the radius is 3. And 2 sine t and 2 cosine t have become the terms that describe the size of the hand path. Now wait, I gave you an equation last week that had a number in it that gave us flower petals. What's the difference? Well, let's go back and play around with our waves to find out. Specifically, let's take the graph y equals sine x, which we remember as being the graph for a sine wave from last week, right? Now let's take the graph y equals sine of 2x, which is similar to the equation I gave you guys last week that gave us flower petals, and see how that graphs out. As you can see, it does significantly change the appearance of the graph. Namely, if we take the distance between two peaks on each graph, this is a property called wavelength, what we find is that the graph of y equals sine 2x has one half the wavelength of y equals sine x. Okay, so let's take the property we just played with, y equals 2 sine x, and graph that out. What we find here is that the wavelength is actually exactly the same as y equals sine x, but what's changed is how high the peaks are and how low the valleys are. Namely, they go from positive 2 to negative 2. This is a property that we refer to as amplitude. So when it comes to graphing out Poi equations, you can think of wavelength as being the determining factor that gives us flower petals, and amplitude as being the determining factor in giving us the size of the hand path. Okay, so let's take this lesson then and graph ourselves out a couple unit circle patterns, shall we? Just as a basis of comparison, let's go ahead and give ourselves our good old extension graph one more time. x equals sine t plus sine t, y equals cosine t plus cosine t, just so we've got a basis of comparison for everything, right? Cool. Now let's take the graph x equals one half sine t plus sine t, y equals one half cosine t plus cosine t. Now you'll notice that since we haven't added any numbers to the t's, this once again is going to be an extension graph, except that now the terms that determine the size of the hand path are one half. That means that what we're graphing out in this case is a unit circle extension. We have our hand path that's the size of an isolation, and we have our extension around it. Awesome. Let's try another unit circle pattern. This one might be a little bit more of a challenge to decipher. x equals 1 half sine t plus sine of negative t. y equals 1 half cosine t plus cosine of negative t. 
Now, we've got the same unit circle sized hand path, but you'll note that negative number in front of the T denotes anti-spin. Since it's a single downbeat, this gives us a cat eye. Two anti-spin pedals, only one downbeat though. Awesome. So, what does this tell us about the equations that we can use to describe poi? Well, we can throw in a couple of added variables and they will tell us specifically how big the hand path is in comparison to the poi path. By saying x equals a sine t plus b sine t and taking the proportion of a to b, we can say that for all unit circle patterns, a is going to have to be one half of b. Now, you can say that for any proportion that works out that way. Let's say we make a equal to 1, b equal to 2, so on and so forth. Why is it important that we know these specific numbers? Well, there are cases where it counts for creating specific patterns, namely things like zero points. Let me show you what I mean here. We're going to take a similar graph to the one that created a cat eye for us. Namely, we're going to say x equals sine t plus sine of negative t, y equals cosine t plus cosine of negative t. Now, you'll note the hand path radius here is going to be 1. And what that actually does is it smushes down the cat eye to the point where it just becomes a vertical line. And then at either end, the poi is actually forced into a zero point. This is a linear isolation. We can take the same idea and apply it to a different graph. Say x equals 2 sine t plus sine of negative 2t. y equals 2 cosine t plus cosine of negative 2t. Now the hand path radius is going to be 2 in every direction. And we know from last week that putting negative 2 next to the t results in a triketra-like pattern. In this case, what it does is it flattens out all of the flower petals for the triketra into these forced zero points. Now, these aren't the only stalls that we can create uh, using poi math, but these are some interesting cases that force zero points in a cool kind of way and give us a, an interesting mathematical property. So if we add the variable m to this equation right before t, then any time b is equal to 1, we can say that when a and m have the same value and m is a negative number, we get automatic zero points out of it. Thanks to Charlie for that insight. So, enjoy and have some more fun with your poi math. Peace.